So buying that old voltmeter reminded me that I had this. Um, haven't looked at it for a while. Um, it's quite interesting story how I acquired this also. Well, let's discuss what it is. It's a microwave power meter. It's a model 430C. And um, there are different ways of measuring power in RF circuits, microwave circuits. Most of the time it's used with a diode detector. Uh, there's a diode that rectifies the signal and then that goes into some amplification circuit. Uh, you can also use, use a thermistor. Um, so that's sometimes used. This uses what's called a bolometer. And a bolometer is basically a, a metal resistor, like a wound resistor. And the, the microwave goes into a cavity. It goes into where that wound wire is and it heats it up and changes the resistance of that wire because it heats it up. And that's a, a, a bolometer. If you have one of those um, thermal cameras that are very popular these days, um, those uh, use a detector that's a microbolometer. It uses the same principle as a bolometer. Uh, heat impinges on a little area that heats up and changes the uh, properties of it, and that's the way the image is built up using a microbolometer. This is the old original bolometer, though. Um, I think I have a bolometer somewhere around. It's just it just looks like a piece of Bakelite with a BNC on it, and that's about it. So you put a, a BNC cable on here, and that microbolometer, and and that's your that's your connector. I think I had an N-type uh, RF connector on the end of it. Um, anyway, uh, so this is a vacuum tube uh, based meter. I'm not quite sure what. Vintage, vintage it is. I think it's the late 60s. Um, and it has some nice big, nice knobs. There's that bolometer bias current. So you put a current into that resistor and then you measure the voltage back, I guess. There's a range knob, uh, bolometer temperature coefficient, negative or positive, bolometer resistance, uh, 200 ohm or 100 ohm, uh, power switch. Um, the old HP sign in, in, uh, icon, or what do you call those things, uh, insignia, I guess, uh, circle with a uh, with HP in it. Uh, it has a couple uh, couple cards that came with it, saying it was inspected. The card is card is labeled uh, May of 1968. Uh, that's when it was printed, at least, and then somebody inspected it. I'm not sure exactly what date. Uh, notice. Your instrument has been tested and calibrated to meet its published specification. Hewlett-Packard's calibration measurements are traceable to the National Bureau of Standards to the extent allowed by the Bureau calibration facilities. Immediately after unpacking, inspect for damage. Uh, other than uh, operate the instrument, hmm, operate the instrument, notify us if there's any damage or failure using the procedure outlined in the instruction manual. Also comes, comes with this, warning, big red thing, read operating instructions before connecting bolometer. So I guess you can damage the bolometer if the settings are wrong, maybe the bias is too high or something, or something like that. Um, anyway, big red sticker for that. All right, so uh, the story of this thing uh, is, uh, uh, as you know, I worked for Hewlett Packard for some time. And while I was working for Hewlett Packard Laboratories, uh, which is on a 1601 Page Mill Road in Palo Alto, California. Um, they, um, once a year, they would have an auction. So instead of throwing this old equipment away, they would kind of store it and then allow uh, employees to, uh, to buy it at an auction. And then the proceeds from the auction went into the... Uh, picnic fund. We would have a picnic every year up in the redwood trees up in the, the Santa Cruz mountains. Anyway, um, and so I was at one of the auctions and they had a bunch of old stuff and uh, people were bidding on that and I bought a few things. And they kind of had it stored in a back room. And uh, if you know a little bit about Hewlett Packard, uh, 1501 is is where uh, Dave and Bill would have their offices. There was two two offices next to one another, and Dave is in one, and Bill was was in the other. Dave Packard and Bill Hewlett, 
And uh, in the back, there was like a little Japanese garden and a little putting green and stuff. It's a nice little place. Um, anyway, uh, these were in building two and they were in a, um, uh, all, all of the stuff that was being auctioned was in this like janitor's closet. And they were pulling this stuff out and way in the back of the closet that nobody knew about was this box, this cardboard box, and nobody knew what was inside. And so they pulled it out and they opened it up and it was a, it was basically a case full of these. And some, be, be, before in the olden days, there was actually manufacturing in that building and these were built in that building. And so these were stock from the manufacturing line and you can tell that it still has the sticker over the AC cord. And so these were old stock, never sold. These are brand new out of the factory line, never sold. Um, and I got to buy one. I don't remember how much I bought it for. It wasn't much, um, but uh, brand new, never touched by anybody. Never made it into the sales office. Uh, still at the factory floor. So very, very cool. Um, I noticed that I could take the back off without uh, removing the tag. So I'm, go oh, I'm gonna do that. This is the first time I've ever had this thing open. And I think this thing should just slide out. And maybe I'm wrong. Oh, there we go. Right, you will see it the first time also. It's beautiful inside, it's all point to point wiring. Some very high precision resistors here, hand wound. Let's turn it around. There's all the uh, vacuum tubes inside. Zero adjust, full scale adjust. Slope and offset, right? Uh, 12 AX7s. Uh, looks like this is a big inductor. And uh, nice transformer. Hewlett Packard used to wind their own transformers. There was a shop in Palo Alto uh, that was exclusively for for making making transformers. This 
the beautiful, beautiful switch here. I'll leave you with some nice pictures of the insides. <laughs>